Howdy, howdy, folks. It is Diecast Buffet here again, and Martin Truex Jr. gets it done, finally breaks the winless streak, and wins at Dover again on a Monday, so it's really interesting. He's, he's Martin Truex Jr. is great at Martinsville, and apparently Monday Dover races, it's just it's just a match made in heaven. Of course, he wins at that beautiful Bass Pro Shops paint scheme. Make sure to pre-order that awesome 124 race win die cast hopefully it has a crap load of confetti on it and i'm pretty sure they'll offer the 164 don't know if it'll get made they're kind of finicky on the 164 trucks but hopefully it does get made and uh hey it's pretty cool his brother ryan trucks did win the Xfinity race i would love to see a raced version 164 that probably won't happen because it's a super but you know what that uh is all about but of course for all your pre-orders make sure to check out the promo code down below, use code Diecast Buffet for any orders, thirty dollars or more. Um, great to be back. It's been a while since we've uploaded a video. <laughs> um, Dover, I tell you what, man, it, it, it's it's good to see Dover racing good again. It really is. You go back um, back in the early twenty tens, Dover was one of my favorite races to watch every year because you saw a lot of battle of attrition, a lot of parts failures, comers or goers. Today's race was very tame for most, th you know, throughout the, th the event, I'd say, uh, event, um, easy for me to say. About 80% of it was just long green flag runs. We did get some green flag pit stops. We've seen a lot of pit issues, a lot of drivers making mistakes. Uh, we did see a few cautions here and there, but early in the race, that was my favorite portion because they were just really aggressive. Um, the, the clouds and the sunshine, that definitely kept changing things. The temperature, uh, it'd be sunny and get a little hot, and then the clouds would come in. With just a very light sprinkle, one portion in the race that didn't stop it or nothing. But it gave it enough uh, spice, so to speak, to kind of mix it up a little bit. And um, I, I just think it's just a good quality Dover race. I, I, I said this in my video last week. When I, when I said that, um, or I seen that Dover and Kansas was coming up on the schedule, I get excited. And you want to know why? Because Dover and Kansas race fantastic with the next-gen car. When I see tracks like Martinsville and Richmond, it's a disappointment. When I see these flat tracks that I know are going to race like crap uh, with these next-gen cars, the Xfinity and trucks will put on a great show most likely, But uh, except it's Richmond. <laughs> no, nothing races good anymore there. Um it's just these these fast, high-bank tracks. They really work well, these next-gen cars. And it still blows my mind that Phoenix has two race dates. Richmond has two race dates. Oh, by the way, Martinsville, with the rules package they have, has two race dates yet. We still have fantastic organic racing at Dover. Um, and the rain delays, I feel like, could be easily avoided. There was a reason why... Uh, for the longest amount of time, they ran it right after the Coca-Cola 600. It was hot enough. I don't know how the weather is up there in, you know, the northeastern area. But there's a reason why they kept it after the Coca-Cola 600, because the weather is favorable. Now they moved it into April and May, and that's when you're starting to see these rain delays in Monday races. races. You're obviously going to have rain delays no matter where you schedule your event. It's just part of motorsports. But my point is, is that you're going to have a significantly harder time in certain portions of the year because it rains in, you know, heavier fashions. But uh, I do think they should move this back into the summer. I think that would help it out. Still a really good crowd. I, I expected significantly less for a Dover Monday race. Um, Dover, though, is it's it's one of those like niche markets. If you look back in the, the, the you know, the next Dale Cup days, I couldn't believe how many people actually showed up for a Bush Series Dover race. Just a random Bush Series Dover race. They had grandstands around the whole racetrack just about. And there were so many fans there just for a Bush race. You could only imagine the energy they had uh, for a Cup Series race. So my point is is that Dover, is it, it, the track, it hasn't gone anywhere. They just got to keep these cars racing good at Dover. And that will help bring back a lot of that uh, that energy and, you know, the love that uh, Dover once had. And personally, the racing is the best it has been at Dover in probably at least eight years. The last time I can remember Dover being truly worth watching was 20, uh, 2013 and 2014. After that, it started to cliff dive. So uh, it's really good to see Dover kind of get back into its mojo. I've been sick, so I don't sound as great, but... Uh, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't a it wasn't a crash fest. You know how I love a good crash fest, but it was just good organic racing. Um, 
I love Dover. I, if it was up to me, we would get rid of one of the Richmond races immediately and get a second Dover race because I just love the track. Uh, but Kansas is coming up. Hey, Kansas is doing pretty good. Hopefully it doesn't put put a stinker. Uh, but I, the one-and-a-half-mile races I get excited for because these cars suit that style of racing. It, it, it's asinine to me that, you know, 10 years ago, everybody hated one-and-a-half-mile tracks. Everyone's like, we need more short tracks. We need more of them. And then now we get more short tracks, and the racing is clearly not that good. And I, I think more and more fans are finally admitting that. You know, the first season, you kind of like, okay, growing pains. It's something different. But now we realize, okay, th- there's a th- there's really a problem with the short tracks. And you look at the one-and-a-half miles or the intermediates, you know, the, the higher bank tracks, and just, I'm telling you, man, Dover, really good stuff. Uh, the Xfinity race, it was pretty good. It was really cool to see Truex win. Um, but I, I just, I don't know, something about these next-gen cars, they're, the way they race around here is just really fun to watch. But uh, huge congratulations to all the Truex fans uh, getting his first win since Richmond 2021. He did win the uh, the Clash uh, this year, so that's that sounds really cool. And I believe they are making a 164 of that, so that would be uh, something I know uh, a lot of the Truex fans are going to want to have, uh, both of those Bass Pro Shops race to win paint schemes but um yeah josh berry back in the 48 car had a solid solid run um who knows where he's going to be driving next year i've heard rumors he might be going to Stuart haas i wouldn't be surprised he's at a chevrolet team who knows i tell you what though he's improving mightily I, I i think he is really putting himself in a good position uh to have a competitive full-time ride next year uh, there's a lot of drivers could be on their way out. Amarola, Kevin Harvick. What's going to go on over there at the Stuart Haas Racing Camp with Riley Herbst? Oh, by the way, you still have Cole Custer, and then you still have Haley Deegan. How does that all shake out with the Xfinity Series? Who gets promoted? Who gets demoted? There's a lot to be decided at Stuart Haas Racing, and I think a crafty veteran, I mean, he'd still be considered the the greenhorn because he has less than 10 cup starts, but a crafty veteran who has a lot of stock car experience, maybe just in late models, I think it'd be a really good combination over there at Stuart Haas Racing to lead them uh, in the years to come. So we'll see how that goes. Chase Dale, another, you know, quiet but uneventful day. You can't really ask for much. It's only his, what, third race back. Um, There's plenty more road courses and opportunities for him to win. I truly do think he will find a way to win, um, especially when, now in my vi- in the video on this, guys, when you don't have to race for points, you don't have to worry about stages. Stages, you just wad them up and throw them away. All you have to do is find a way to get out front with the final laps. That's it. You can take every gamble. You can take every run. You can take every risk because the top 30 point rule doesn't apply. So Chase Sellett could go to every single racetrack and take every single gamble like he has 30 wins in the bank. So it's a blessing uh, in a lot of ways because he don't have to worry about it. Just go win and, okay, <laughs> that's the beauty of the top 30 rule. Now, if you get 15, 16 different winners, then you're screwed. So who knows? And how about Ty Gibbs, man? What a, I'm sorry, this, this kid is very impressive um, in the cup card. Quiet, keeping his head down, doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. And um, I, I, I tell you what. He, he continues to get better, and I would not be surprised one bit he gets his first career win this year. Definitely uh, worthy of that uh, title, uh, you know, the Rookie of the Year. And he's just he's a really talented race car driver. Hope he keeps his head on straight, keeps going good. But, yeah, Truex gets it done at Dover. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Again, I apologize for not having a video out last uh, week. <laughs> I haven't been feeling good. But uh, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Kansas is coming up. Super excited for that. Darlington after that. And then I think it's North Wilkesboro. So and I, I want to I wanna touch on North Wilkesboro real quick before we end this video. I don't know if it's going to be a good race or not. I've been pondering this idea back and forth. Is Dover, or not Dover, uh, I'm going crazy. Um, North Wilkesboro going to be a good race or not. It's a short track. Next-gen cars suck at most short tracks. It's flat. I personally, if I had to be a betting man today, and this might age like milk, I feel like the pre-race show is probably going to be more exciting than North Wilkesboro's All-Star Race. I'm just going to keep it 100% honest with you. 
I will say, though, if I could pick the truck race or the all-star race to go to and, and just, you know, forget the, the pageantry, the historical significance, if I'm just going for the best product available to watch, I'm going to the truck race 10 times out of 10 because the trucks are going to put on a barn burger. I can almost guarantee you they are. Um, they just race really aggressive at these flat tracks because they're they're built for that stuff. I feel like the cup cars, there's a good chance it's going to be a big disappointment. But at the same time, I'm hoping the drivers acknowledge that if you want to have North Wilkesboro on the schedule, you got to make some noise, man. Uh, so I'm hoping the drivers will really spice it up. Usually the All-Star Race is the most overhyped event of the NASCAR calendar every single year. Uh, it's the same song and dance and dog and pony show, so hopefully this year will be different. What do y'all think? Make sure to comment down below. Hope you're having a blessed day, everybody. Diecast Buffet.